Good afternoon, dear Andres Opsak, Secretary General of EuroCities, dear Laia, dear Laia Bonet, Chair of the EuroCities Digital Forum and Deputy Mayor of Barcelona, dear representatives of all the European cities, uh, members of EuroCities Network, uh, also Fernando, Fernando de Pablo, Director of Madrid Digital Office, and all the uh, staff of the different areas and directorates of Madrid City Council, and all the partners from different entities, companies of Madrid City coming and joining us today. Good afternoon, uh, welcome to all, uh, and particularly, of course, to, to all the friends, to all the partners from the EuroCities Network. It's a pleasure for us, for Madrid City Council, to host this meeting uh, of the EuroCities Digital Forum and to have organized it uh, together with EuroCities and, and the Madrid City Council, the program for, for these three days here in, here in Madrid. This, is, uh, this meeting and this forum is, is very relevant, uh, and EuroCities is itself a very relevant network. Uh, EuroCities is, in fact, as you know, allowing us, the cities, working together, exchanging ideas, and making our voice heard in the European Union. Since already a few years, since 1986, when EuroCities was uh, started, was created. Now we are more than 200 cities in this network, and Madrid, of course, is one of the cities and one of, of course, of the main uh, capital cities in Europe. We are a proud and active member of the EuroCities network, and we are increasing our activity, our presence, our commitment in EuroCities in these years and in the following years we will continue to do so. Uh, last year, 2021, we organized, uh, we hosted here in Madrid the Mobility Forum, which was held uh, remotely because at that time still the pandemic uh, did not allow to recover fully the normality. And now, luckily, this year, we are now hosting the meeting of the uh, digital forum. Now, as you can see, we are very glad to see physical presence of many of the European cities here today. Somehow, ironically, uh, the mobility forum was held remotely and the digital forum is being held physically, but this is how things come. Besides, in addition to our work in EuroCities, in Madrid, we are, of course, committed with the European Union values and projects, and we are also working and leading as much as possible uh, our shared objectives in different networks, as UCLG, U20, and uh, in particular, for example, recently, we uh, have been nominated, we are uh, active, we are taking the role of the Regional Secretary for Europe of Metropolis, the network of large cities and metropolitan areas worldwide. We are also uh, working as we're leading, together with the city of Nice in France, the partnership on security in the public spaces of the uh, urban agenda of the European Union, and many, many other initiatives that you may know already and that we would like to uh, work and exchange with you these days and look for the synergies between all our different roles in EuroCities and in other European and global forums. Um, this forum in particular uh, that joins us today is very necessary to show and to move forward our commitment of the uh, cities, of the Euro Cities Network with the objectives of the European Digital Decade. It is urgent to address and make the best, the best use and give the best directions to the digital revolution we are in fact witnessing at the moment. It is not only a question of technology and innovation, it involves strong potential benefits for sustainability, for environmental sustainability, for the citizens, and for the quality of life in our cities. And also it involves and requires a major cultural change in our city and administrations. Uh, it affects the way we interact with our citizens, the improvement of our efficiency as administrations, the internal structure, the quality of the services we provide, the legal regulations as well, and the new forms of cooperative work that we need to fully address. In Madrid, in particular, we provide a service to more than 5 million people, half a million companies, and 10 million tourists each year. For these reasons, uh, digitalization, digital transformation, is a crucial tool, and we are very pleased to, to, to rank currently, together with Berlin, as the first uh, city in the world in the provision of digital public services according to the United Nations Lossy Index 2022, the local online service index that has been published this year. 
uh, in the last two years, to give you a reference of the um, transformation that we have witnessed in the city, in part due to the needs of the pandemic and in part due to our commitment towards the transformation, we have experienced a 300% increase in electronic relationship with citizens, interactions with them, and we have implemented the universal electronic signature for all the staff in the Madrid City Council. Two years ago, we had like 10,000 electronic signatures per month, and now we are having 400,000 electronic signatures per month. This will give you an idea of the transformation in that sense. And in parallel, we have reduced by 80% the, the, the paper, printed paper, that is being moved from one department to another in parallel to this digitalization. All these results are not only a matter of uh, economic improvement, efficiency, also, of course, also of reduction of burdens, uh, processing times, time savings, energy consumption, sustainability, transparency, but it also consolidates Madrid as an innovative and attractive city with infrastructure, technology, and talent in this digitalization area. We are a key digital hub and a key cybersecurity hub as well in Europe that attracts these economic sectors of enormous potential and, and current growth and translates into more competitiveness, internalization and quality of jobs and economic prosperity, economic prosperity in our city. In these three days of the digital forum, there will be plenty of time for, for rich set of activities that we have uh, been programming, panels, discussions, meetings, networking opportunities, also social events of, uh, during these three days, of course, and uh, that will allow all of us to exchange these ideas and to move forward better and faster towards these shared objectives of digital transformation in our cities and all the linked transitions that have to happen synergistically with the digital transition from environmental sustainability, climate neutrality, to social cohesion in our cities. We will also have the time to discuss again, and in this context in particular, how to raise our voice, the voice of the European cities in the European Union context, so that we are heard and we are supported more strongly and more directly in terms of funding, but also in terms of taking us into account in the decision making and in the priorities of the European Union, having more weight in the European Union decision making progress. This is, in fact, one of the main aims of EuroCities, and we thank EuroCities for all the work, the efforts, and the progress made in this direction along the years, and that, that will come next for the future cooperation and joint work in this direction. Thank you, Secretary General. Thank you, all the EuroCities members, for this uh, long-standing work, as I say, and for particularly the Digital Forum. Thank you also, Barcelona, for chairing the forum and joining us today. In fact, in summary, we cities are key for the success of the European project, and we are also key for the success of the digital transformation, for the benefit of our citizens, and for the sustainability and quality of life in our cities. Enjoy the meeting, this uh, digital forum, these three days, and also enjoy the city, the open, charming, I would say, welcoming and lively city of Madrid, we will have time for that as well, and I hope you not only enjoy, but also that you soon come back to our city. Thank you very much, and welcome, everybody. Thank you very much, Santiago, uh, for that introduction, and already you've touched upon some key things that we'll talk about in these days. Uh, welcome, everyone. My name is Eddie Adams. I'm uh, an accidental urban policy specialist, uh, but the moderator of these three days in Madrid. Um, it's a fantastic opportunity for us to, to reconnect physically and Santiago, you made the point about the uh, irony of the mobility session being online and here we are physically and I think we're also trying to work out what the right balance is, you know, it's 80, 20, 70, 30 between physical and, and digital, but in the meantime, let's just enjoy this fabulous chance to reconnect. It's nice to see familiar faces, nice to see new faces. Um, if you've been involved in EuroCities before, but this is your first physical meeting, um, I've got some, some key things to say to you from the steering committee. Um, really, they want to make sure you maximize the opportunities to connect, to engage, to network, to build the relationships, to, you know, to learn while you're here. Um, I should say with my moderator's hat on, there is no such thing as a silly question. So feel free to ask any questions you like. Um, the steering committee is also really keen to gather 
uh, your feedback and your thoughts. So you'll see uh, on some of the walls here, there are flip chart pages. Uh, also on your clever badges, you have a, a QR code. When you scan this, there's, there's a space with all sorts of things, including a space for feedback, comments, questions, suggestions. Um, the steering committee will meet in four weeks' time, and they'll be reading through the comments you make. So this is not something which will end up in the bin. They're really leaning in, listening, keen to know what you think about this meeting, keen to get your comments. So please play an active part in all of the conversations and also uh, in, in, in the, the different ways of, of giving your thoughts. Uh, and maybe while I say that, could I maybe ask... The, the steering committee members to stand up. If you're a member of the Digital Forum Steering Committee, could you stand up, please? So uh, you can, we can see who you are, and we can, uh, over the coffee breaks, over the lunch breaks, in the evening, uh, go and have a chat with these people so you can uh, make your connections. Thanks very much, folks. Lovely, thank you. Uh, and one other thing while I'm talking about identifying people, um, if you see someone with a green lanyard, it means they're a member of the EuroCity staff. And again, I can see a few green lanyards over there. So feel free to go and ask them if you have any questions or some comments. So, uh, so that's uh, just some, some housekeeping things. Um, let's have a little quick overview of the program. Let's just uh, have a helicopter perspective on uh, how we're going to spend this time. If we could just pop to, yep, here we go. So um, in a few minutes, we're going to have a high-level panel discussion, which I'll say a little bit more about shortly. We're then going out to a site visit to La Nave uh, to see a, a digital, a really exciting digital space in the city. We'll be bused there uh, and bused back for an informal networking dinner this evening. Uh, so really today is about scene setting, making connections, creating the space for us to, uh, to dive in a bit more deeply tomorrow. Uh, you can see tomorrow we have some plenaries, um, some parallel sessions. We'll be looking at some of the specific what the digital forum is, is doing. Uh, some of those, those, those uh, si parallel sessions will be going to into the kind of day-to-day -day detail. Uh, we have another site visit tomorrow, going to uh, Espacio Fundacion uh, Telefonica at the top of Callao, top of Gran Via. That's also a, a bus trip, and then a formal dinner tomorrow night. And then our attention on Friday shifts a bit more to skills inclusion uh, and making sure that people aren't left behind. So a session on ICT in the labor market, also a session with a really interesting input uh, from Madrid about what they're doing to make sure all their citizens have the right skills uh, to actively participate in the 21st century. So that's the, that's the, uh, the shape of it. Um, just one other thing maybe, uh, you'll see there's a, a, a Twitter hashtag uh, earlier on, so it's uh, hashtag um, Digital Forum Madrid if you want to uh, tell the world what's happening, or hashtag digital EU, and use the EuroCities handle as well if you're telling the world what's going on. Uh, you can also, uh, we're using Slido at various points. Uh, so if you, when you click on this uh, QR code, it will also take you into Slido, so the, you know, it's all nice and interoperable, which is how things should be, as we all know, in the digital world. So uh, we'll let you know when we're using Slido, and you can uh, join the conversation that way. Okay. I don't think there's anything else for me to say in terms of practicals. I don't think I've missed anything. Um, just if I'm, I'm going to invite our panelists to join us. Maybe if you want to, our four panelists to come and join us on the stage for the first uh, session. And we'll also especially invite uh, Laia Bonnet from uh, Barcelona with your chair of the Digital Forum hat. Laia, do you want to come and just say a few words of welcome to our guests? Thank you. Thanks. Buenas tardes. Good afternoon to all of you. Um, it's, it's a great pleasure being here. And sorry for being almost late, Santiago. <laughs> um, so let me, let me start by thanking uh, the City Council, the City of Madrid, for hosting us here. Um, muchas gracias. Muchas gracias a todo el equipo de, de Madrid. Let me express me in, in, in Spanish for this, this, these words. Um, Habéis hecho posible volvernos a encontrar por primera vez desde hace demasiado tiempo uh, en persona, la primera vez, el primer encuentro presencial después de la pandemia y eso es seguro mucho más importante que cualquier otra reunión de, de nuestro foro de Ciudades Digitales. Por lo tanto, déjame expresarte a ti, Santiago, como representante del Ayuntamiento y aquí el agradecimiento por uh, acogernos hoy aquí. 
Indeed, as, as we have said, uh, this is the first time we come together since 2019. Long time, such a long time. And by, by the amount of members uh, that have registered to participate, there, is, uh, there was certainly an appetite uh, from all of us to meet physically again. This is not a coincidence, I think, or a mere uh, willingness uh, to travel. Um, the good work this digital forum has carried out over the last, the past two years uh, and a half is the reason why we are getting back stronger than ever. I'm sure that you all share this, this feeling. Since we last met online, the European Commission has set up an ambitious legislative and policy agenda aiming to redefine what the digital transition means for Europe. And we can say the changes they are proposing are mostly for the better. Protecting digital rights, setting the rules of the game for a human-centric AI, creating the conditions for European data spaces, addressing the digital divide, which has become a very important challenge for all of us. So we are not far from these goals, uh, rather the opposite. What we have been doing as EuroCities Digital Forum uh, in every step of the way is to remind them that you cannot transform Europe from Brussels only. That change starts in our neighborhoods. Uh, we have reminded them uh, that they need to empower local institutions to actually deliver for citizens. And that this remains true even if uh, in the digital and for digital policy. Just some examples to give you a hint on how we are doing it. We have advocated cities' concerns towards the European Commission and Parliament to reinforce local government's access to data in the hands of private companies. The argument is clear, these data are produced in our cities and they could certainly be used to improve public services. We are developing the first standardized model of AI uh, registries for city governments so that local institutions across Europe can enhance transparency and accountability when it comes to artificial intelligence. We are also sharing learning on the development and use of local digital twins, which are forward and center of a digital transition that fosters sustainable cities. And the last, but not the least, uh, we are also working with national governments and regions with the support of EU institutions to bring all these activities together and scale them up across Europe uh, through the Living in EU initiative. This is the kind of good work that the forum is doing and I want to commend the EuroCities team for this. So Andre, uh, Federica, Ludewijk, uh, and the whole team of EuroCities, the success of this forum is also your success. Thank you, thanks so much. Over s just, just, just a minute, that was uh, the, the, almost the last thing I wanted to, to, to share with you, but let me share some, some other uh, uh, thoughts. Um, as I said, over the last couple of years, um, uh, we have uh, worked very hard, but in the same time, uh, new members have joined this forum. For the first timers among you, the whole team is at your disposal. So you know them and uh, uh, you can share with them uh, all your concerns. Uh, you will see that this digital forum is a space to exchange, to learn. And I would like to invite you to use your time in Madrid to, during this week to start conversation, to ask questions, to share your perspectives. All your inputs uh, s will serve to shape the future digital agenda of this forum. To all of you, I'm glad now it's uh, the last, the last uh, words. Um, I'm glad to see you all here. Uh, I'm really glad. And without further ado, I think we have uh, a panel uh, to start with this forum. So uh, let's start and let's enjoy these days in Madrid. Thank you very much. Yeah, that's it.
Thank you, Laya. I feel like someone who's gone to a classical a concert and they've clapped to the wrong part, you know, <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so uh, please uh, this one keep it, yeah, yeah, Perfect. stay on the stage. Um, can this I invite one. our other panelists, our high-level panelists also to come and join us on the stage, please? Uh, just as they're making their way up, I'll briefly introduce them and uh, I'll just say yeah. a little bit about how this will work. So we've already met uh, Laya, we've also met Santiago, uh, who's uh, the uh, Madrid uh, Councillor of Internationalization and Cooperation. We also have uh, Marie Zezelkova. Really nice to see you. So nice yeah. to see you again. Yeah, delighted you can join us. Um, and we also have uh, from Rotterdam, Fuzi Agbar, who is the uh, Deputy Mayor responsible for digital inclusion and digital skills. So we have a fantastic uh, high level panel representing the city level and the national level. Um, shortly we'll jump in and I'll ask them each to say a few words of introduction. Uh, but before that, I'm delighted to invite Andre Sobchak, who needs no introduction from me, but I'll remind everyone that he's the new Secretary General for EuroCities. Congratulations, by the way, Andre. Great to see you in position. Looking forward to working with you. Uh, the floor is yours, and uh, I think you're going to say a few words of welcome uh, before we get started. Thanks. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, dear Deputy Mayors, uh, dear representatives of our city members uh, and uh, friends, I hope, uh, uh, partners for us, it's really a pleasure for me also to be uh, here for this uh, digital forum of EuroCities in Madrid. Thanks a lot, Santiago, and for the whole team of Madrid for organizing this beautiful event. Uh, and uh, we will have a lot of opportunities to discuss uh, together. Actually, this uh, digital forum uh, marks uh, several uh, new beginnings. First of all, the name has changed uh, since the last meeting in 2019. I remember that in the past, uh, and I have been working for EuroCities over the last uh, eight years, and we were talking about the Knowledge Society Forum. Uh, I think that the new name, Digital Forum, is much more appropriate and really shows the focus of the work that you are actually doing uh, on a daily basis and also it helps us maybe to communicate even better to external actors and in particular to the Commission uh, also what we are actually doing here together. And uh, of course on a personal level it's uh, one of the first meetings for me uh, as a new Secretary General. Last week I attended the cultural forum in Lille uh, but I'm very happy also to, to see here again the huge number of participants that really show that uh, you are interested in working together, exchanging your good practices, but also maybe your challenges and difficulties, because EuroCities is also the network and the platform where we can trust each other and where we can actually reveal some of the difficulties also that we are facing and the things that together we can actually improve by bundling our knowledge, our resources, and our capacity to, to innovate. So it's really uh, very important as well. Over the last uh, two years, it has been said, uh, you have continued to work together in the forum thanks to the digital uh, technologies. Uh, and obviously, uh, you have been uh, the leading forum on this uh, because you are expert uh, in this field. But uh, as the previous speakers have already said, uh, physical meetings are very important. I have always thought that uh, the forum meetings are actually one of the most important activities of our network because here it's where actually different actors meet together, can of course listen to all the different exciting presentations and you have managed really to create a very exciting program. Congratulations for this. Many ex interesting site visits as well. But there are also the coffee breaks, the lunches and the dinners and all the other moments where actually you can get together. Uh, sometimes you can make friends, uh, sometimes also you can start new projects here during the forums. And this is something that is particular, of course, important and it's important for our network. And it's one of the priorities also I have, of course, for this network maybe to develop uh, beyond the fact that we are having experts in our network. It's also a community of uh, people that uh, actually can learn together, exchange, and even, of course, in between the meetings, uh, just uh, send an email, give a call to a colleague and to say how you're actually doing and facing this particular challenge and uh, helping this and contributing also to the personal development of the members will be a priority of uh, myself and the whole team. So thanks a lot for setting up this interesting program. Thank you to Santiago, to uh, the City of Madrid again. 
three exciting days that will come together. A huge thank you also to Laia as the chair of uh, the forum and the steering group. Uh, we have just met before and also the team uh, of Eurocities, of course, uh, Ludovic and Federica. Uh, thank you for the great work and with the rest of the team as well. You can recognize us by the green uh, color of our name, names here. So don't hesitate to come to us and to ask uh, if you have certain questions regarding also, of course, all the other activities of EuroCities and whether you have some ideas for, for us. So we are going to talk uh, about a lot of things related to digital transition and uh, as you have already mentioned both, uh, Santiago and Laia, it's something that uh, is really a transversal subject and this is also, of course, among the priorities of EuroCities. We don't see digital activities in silo. Uh, digital activities actually are a tool to achieve uh, many important goals. We cannot uh, become uh, climate neutral cities without uh, managing also the digital activities. We cannot fight uh, against uh, exclusion if we don't include everybody in digital tools. We cannot create safe places in our cities without digital tools. And we cannot have uh, vibrant uh, economic cities without being involved in these uh, uh, digital activities. And uh, it's very interesting that uh, a lot of things have been done in this area, but still there are a lot of things also to do. And this is also why we need to continue to work with the European Commission about this uh, European uh, digital decade. It's really one of the priorities and we completely agree with all the uh, targets that are fixed by uh, this uh, digital decade. Connectivity for all, more high quality data access, uh, fully digitalized public services, as you mentioned, uh, the success of Madrid, um, and uh, also basic digital skills for all. These are tools actually that uh, are very important uh, for them. And as it has been mentioned, you cannot do it uh, alone at the level of the European Commission. You need the member states, but you also need the cities. And we as cities, we cannot do it alone neither. We need the support from uh, the member states and from the European Commission. And uh, having these direct exchanges is really important for us. This is the raison d'etre of uh, EuroCities, of course, to have this digital uh, forum to be a platform where we actually can all meet together and uh, innovate and create new elements. One good example, I think, is the mission for climate neutral and smart cities. Uh, the work has begun and I'm very happy, of course, that a huge majority of the cities, uh, of the 112 cities, are in the EuroCities network. I hope that the others will join us as well uh, because it can also create more, more synergies. The work has just started in this mission, but I think it's a good example uh, of how we can actually work together and also talk about the necessary investments to be made in the cities. But uh, of course, this is just one example and I think uh, what is also important for us is maybe to see how the different initiatives can be better connected and how we also can ensure that there's a more systematic integration of cities in the governance of, uh, in this case, uh, digital transition at the European level. It's very important that uh, we are on the table when all the main decisions are made in this field because you can learn from the experience, the skills uh, of our cities, and uh, you can create better regulations if you listen to cities, I think. And also, as it was mentioned, uh, it's very important, of course, that we share values, uh, common aims and so on, but also that we have the financial resources to do so. So <laughs> you will not be surprised that again, as your city secretary general, I remind also our expectation to have direct funding from the European Commission because as we uh, all know, uh, the fact that uh, a lot of money is filtered by the national governments is at least a loss of time. Uh, and sometimes in certain countries and certain situations, actually uh, not a guarantee for the European Commission to see the targets that are shared by the cities actually fulfilled because there are some other considerations that might prevent this. So I'm not going to be longer because uh, you're all waiting for listening to uh, our excellent speakers. Thank you for, for coming and joining and uh, we will have an excellent debate and thank you Eddie also for taking over the overall moderation. It's very important to have uh, competent moderators for these kinds of events. It also ensures the quality of the debates that we are going to follow together for the next uh, two days. Thanks a lot.
Andre. Brilliant. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Andre. So let's jump in. Let's get started. Let me just say a little bit about how this is going to work. Um, so we have our four fantastic speakers, and we'll go, we'll introduce them and, and hear from them shortly. We also have, as a kind of you know, bonus edition, we have uh, Eddie Hartog from the European Commission, who's uh, sitting here in, in the front row. Eddie's the head of, unit of the Technology and Smart, Un Smart Cities Division. Uh, his role is a, a, like a keynote listener role, if you like. We've asked him not to come and give a speech at the start, but to sit and listen, to lean in and hear what's being said, and then we'll invite Eddie in the last 10 minutes just to come and maybe play back some of the key things he's heard, share some of his reflections, and maybe pick up on some of the points our speakers are about to make. So again, big thank you to you, Eddie, for, for joining us today, especially in, in person. Great to see you. So um, without further ado, maybe let's go from left to right. Um, I'll maybe ask each of you to just get us started by explaining where you come into this. Three of you are politicians. It's really important to have politicians in these conversations. So maybe we have three city perspectives, one national perspective. So tell us where you fit into this conversation, especially in relation to uh, cities funding and digital transitions. Uh, just say a little bit about your work. I know you started, li Lai, with your ch working group ch hat on. Swap that around. Give us your Barcelona hat on and tell us where you, where you connect with the discussion we're about to have today. Um. So I'm, I'm, I'm responsible for digital transition, among other uh, issues in, in Barcelona, uh, transport also and international relations. So this is a mix very related to what we are doing here. Uh, and, and I think if I, if I may start with this, uh, I think the, 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 the theme of, uh, of this panel, European collaboration and funding for, uh, for digital um, 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 transition. Uh, I think this theme goes straight to the point uh, that European cities need to make when it comes to, to digital transformation. This is a, a very general view and, and, and I would say um, um, very transversal. Uh, but in this transition, we, the cities, are the front lines of uh, digital challenges, uh, from bridging the, the digital divide uh, to transforming public administration. So outside and inside, um, we have proved once and again uh, that we are capable of addressing uh, uh, these challenges uh, and that we want to do it with innovative uh, policies and projects. So innovation is also something that is very, very uh, linked to the cities. Um, I think the Commission knows that very well um, because it has funded a myriad of, of pilot projects in cities uh, from an innovation, innovative uh, perspective. But I think, and I, I finish with this, um, these words, uh, this, this thought, I think this is not enough. I think um, that we need to stop setting uh, one of infrastructure only, um, setting up uh, one of in, uh, um, infrastructure uh, um, uh, only, and instead of this, uh, we need to channel structural uh, funding towards structural policies. I think only with the structural policies we can uh, tackle uh, the dimension of the challenges we have in front of us. Okay. Thanks, Lai. I already introduced some of the key words we'll be using in these days, the hardware and software, this whole thing about being in cities being in the front line. You know, this is where the buck stops, in a sense. Let's jump from Barcelona to Rotterdam. Yeah, yeah. Fawzi, great to see you. Thanks for joining us. Again, same opportunity to you just to tell us a bit about where you connect with us and maybe share some key thoughts as we start the conversation. Thank you, Eddie. Uh, well, my main focus is digital inclusion. Uh, and I wrote actually my statement down. So uh, sure. uh, just to have it clear also for the audience and for myself. So digital developments are happen happening fast and most of them are not visible. Um, and governments must realize much better that they have a role in this instead of leaving it to the market and to let uh, digital transformation benefit the social and economic challenges of the city. Otherwise, we will end up creating a gap 
between human and the systems. Now, it's my firm belief that if the democratic institutions do not actively interfere with digital transformation, then this transformation will lead to further accumulation of inequalities. Yeah, okay. Thank you very much. We already heard about this. the digital divide was a phrase we already heard this, this, this afternoon. So we'll pick up on these. We'll come back and you know, lift the lid on each of these themes and go into them in a bit more detail, as we will in these coming days. But let's, for the meantime, keep moving across the stage. Santiago, we've, you've given us a thanks again for that fantastic welcome at the beginning. But again, just say a little bit more about your role and maybe pick out some key points you'd want to make as we, as we get further into this exchange. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, my, my, my role is uh, international affairs, so I am a Councillor for International Affairs and Cooperation, where we deal with everything related to European funds, city networks like Eurocities here today, uh, international cooperation for development, and some strategies that uh, typically embrace the, the, the whole new city council and are related to international agreements, such as the SDGs, for example, mm -hmm. for yeah. instance. Okay? So, um, in this way, we cooperate uh, and collaborate with all the departments of the City Council in one way or another. In particular, uh, here today, uh, in the digital transformation angle that uh, focuses this forum today, uh, this, is, this digital transformation is really a key priority for Madrid, and I think that also for the other partner cities here today, in, in several angles. First, uh, we want to make the administration internally work better, more efficiently. This is one first uh, item. But then second, we want to improve beyond the city council to improve how the city is working, how the system is managed in a way, using the best uh, data and the best technologies available, if not putting them in place, ranging from mobility to social services and from almost any department of the, of the city council and of the city life. In this way, our goal is to provide uh, better services, more modern services to citizens. And also, in this process, we want, we think that this is a great opportunity for innovation, for startup creations, for attracting investments, and for creating jobs, prosperity for, for everyone. Also, keeping a close eye at the digital inclusion, avoiding the digital divide that perhaps we can talk a bit later more on that as well. Um, in summary, this is a part of a process that is transforming digitally the city, but not only digitally, also environmentally, also socially, to make uh, the city better for citizens, to have a higher quality of life, and to improve the way that uh, our citizens feel their needs uh, fulfilled in our city in, in all the different aspects. So this is uh, like a general view of, of how the city of Madrid approaches this, this mm -hmm. situation and hopefully share with, with others. Uh, perhaps later we can go in more details of specific uh, measures and projects, funding, etc. in the in the next round, if you wish. Okay, thanks, Santiago. Thank you very much. And you've, you've already picked up something which Andre mentioned, this notion of digital as, as an enabler, you know, as a means to an end rather than an end in itself, and something which helps us, you know, achieve policies which are cross-departmental and cross-cutting. In a sense, that's a huge opportunity, but also a challenge, given our siloed structures quite often. This is a, a transversal opportunity, but it's also not, not an open goal. You know, it's, it's not, not an easy one to convert. Um, and I know, let's, let's bring Maria, because we, we last spoke on a stage in Prague a few years ago. Uh, and your perspective is an urban policy perspective from a national member state perspective. Um, I guess for you, um, this is a means to an end. So maybe again, Marie, explain a little bit about your own role and uh, maybe share with us some of your thoughts around this conversation, which we are already beginning to, to shape quite nicely. Okay. So good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's my honor to be here in Madrid uh, with you. So in the Czech Republic, the topic of uh, green and uh, digital um, transition is very uh, linked with the smart city agenda and uh, we are uh, encouraging the cities to, to make the, the things very innovative, to do innovative projects. And um, normally the, the digital agenda is uh, the ministry, which is the responsible, is the ministry of the trade and industry. So we create together uh, 5G alliance for smart cities and we try to push the cities uh, to do the innovative project. But anyway, I see that now we have a lot of possibilities. Uh, 
So we have, dem we have quite a lot of subsidies, and sometimes I see that in the cities who is doing the digital green smart city agenda is always the same group, the same department, yeah. and sometimes I feel that it's uh, not easy for them to, um, that it's a little bit maybe cultic uh, from the also state level or European level. So um, we approved by the government uh, in 2020 our national smart city strategy and uh, uh, this year we approved implementation plan and so we try step by step with other ministries and stakeholders to push transition, digital and green transition together. Okay, and thanks for you know, underlining the green, the, the twin green digital mega trends, which yeah. in a sense are yes. hand in hand and they're really important uh, kind of part of the context. And, and also thanks for talking about the, the, you know, the, the kind of the, 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 the scope, but also the limitations of the public sector, you know, we will talk about public-private collaborations in these days, and Fros has already said, but we can't leave things to the markets. So it's about finding the appropriate roles and responsibilities at the different kinds of levels. So this is a clearly a, a complex um, situation. I, I mean, sometimes personally with complex things, I find it easier to grasp if I think of concrete, tangible examples. And, and maybe just to kind of like widen the lens a little bit, um, I'd maybe ask you to think about something, an example of something from, from your own context which works well, which you think we should be doing more of, or which is a good example of the way things should be happening. And maybe, maybe Barcelona, first of all, I mean, lots and lots of things to choose yeah. in Barcelona, but is, is there maybe one or two things you put your finger on and say, well, this is the kind of thing that I think you know, shows you know, the way forward, the way we should be working. Yeah, yeah, sorry. <laughs> so if, if we try to put an example of uh, how we are working on, on this um, green digital transition, probably the first thing I would say is that we need to add an adjective to this uh, green digital transition, which is just. Um, we cannot afford um, to, to leave people behind. Um, it is crucial that we discuss uh, new technologies incorporating also the inclusion dimension. Yeah. Uh, so, and, and that's why we are working in Barcelona, uh, trying to put always uh, the social impact of any uh, uh, use of technology on the first line of concerns and, uh, and analysis. Uh, that is particularly important, I think, uh, this, this uh, social this, uh, inclusion dimension. It's particularly important when we talk uh, about cities um, at the local level. The, the digitalization of public administration, the use of AI systems uh, in city services, this all has the potential uh, to make life tougher or easier to citizens uh, that are already worse off. So we have to be aware of the impact of using technologies on all these areas. Uh, so that would be probably the first message. Uh, the green digital transition needs to be also just. Yeah. Uh, a second key issue for us in Barcelona, to lead to the example that you asked me, um, is that digital transformation um, needs to give us tools uh, to make better public policies in particular when it comes to the green transition. We don't want technology for the sake of technology, uh, but to implement more impactful, impactful policies uh, to decarbonize our city, for example, to make it healthier and more livable. And ensuring that uh, policies achieve the results uh, they are aimed for, I think is uh, the more essential uh, mm, worry or concern that uh, we should have. And here's where the Digital Twin uh, project comes into play. Digital Twins are, as you know, uh, so it's, I, I, want, I, I don't want to explain what you know already, but digital 
uh, twins are virtual replicas of a real urban process. Uh, so we, in this case, with the help of data, what we are saying is with the help of data, a digital twin of Barcelona, in our case, would allow us to simulate uh, public interventions in the city and in specific scenarios. For instance, what happens with air quality and in the city or with traffic in a certain neighborhood, uh, if we limit car traffic in certain streets, uh, does it reduce overall traffic in the city and pollution in the city? Or are we just redistributing this pollution and this traffic in other yeah. streets of the city, but the result is the same? A digital twin would allow us to simulate uh, these interventions before we actually implement them uh, in the reality. And so uh, I think that's obvious, but we have to say it, that would uh, give the city council room to correct uh, a policy before implementing, beforehand. Um, as you can imagine, governs, uh, administrations, um, are not um, um, the first one to correct policies that are already implementing. So instead of having to correct the policy, yeah. before, it's better being sure of the impact before implementing them. So I will, I will not go into the details of the project, the challenges mm -hmm. that uh, the data poses in this project, which are relevant, uh, or the cost of it. This is obviously is it costly. But I want to emphasize that when it comes to the theme of this panel, uh, cooperation and funding for digital solution, I think this example, the, the twin, uh, the, uh, the, the, the digital twin, it is the perfect example of how dysfunctional things are in the EU uh, for cities. Um, let me explain you very, very, very briefly. During negotiations uh, towards uh, the next generation EU funds the package, we were told by the Commission that a specific transnational mechanism uh, would be set up for this kind of projects, digital trends. This only makes sense because collaboration between cities um, in this project can make digital twins more useful um, and closer to reality. But this never happened um, because the funds, the next generation funds are managed by the national governments. So in our case in Spain, the government didn't set up a call uh, for uh, such uh, a project. In parallel, we had started uh, conversations with Bologna uh, with the city of Bologna and our respective supercomputing centers, the, the supercomputing center in Bologna and the one in Barcelona, um, uh, to, to work together with this project. Now we find out uh, that there is a call under the Digital Euro program that will provide some funding for this kind of project. So, uh, uh, this uh, stop and start mm, uh, yeah. conversation. We will, of course, take part in this call. It, um, we are sure of that. But the truth is that the model of setting up one-off infrastructure again uh, for a very limit, uh, limited period of time and then dismantle, dismantle the project without any scalable solution uh, of continuity is, is um, disheartening, okay. the less I can say. So we want to develop digital uh, solutions to structurally improve uh, policy making, but we need also structural support uh, to make it happen. Without it, it's, it's okay, uh, thanks for useless. That. Yeah, so this stop, start, stop, start, the kind of pilotitis kind of thing where we, we don't have systemic things, we have little pockets of innovation which run for three years exactly. and then suddenly fall off a cliff. So there will be a chance to hear more about Digital Twins tomorrow, by the way, in the program. If you look, so there's a chance to kind of dive more deeply into this exciting new area where, as you say, we can create these simulations and anticipate mm -hmm. the effects and impacts of things we, we might want to do. Thanks, Leah, for getting the ball rolling. Um, firstly, I, I can see you nodding and connecting with some of the things that, that Leah was saying there. So um, Rotterdam, again, maybe just share with us, uh, from your own perspective, some some positive things for us to build on, uh, and maybe also some of the things which are not so easy, yeah. um, just to, 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 to begin to fill out some of the details here. Uh, I'm going to try to use a uh, specific example yeah. uh, in, in this Super. case, um, by using uh, digital transformation in, uh, in the traffic 
who would like to stimulate, uh, well, we are from, uh, Rotterdam is in the Netherlands, and we are famous for using the bike uh, a lot. Uh, so uh, what we uh, did is using sensor, uh, the traffic light, for uh, bicycles. Uh, so when, they are, uh, when it's raining and they are coming uh, 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 and closer to the traffic light, and the traffic light will uh, turn uh, into the green. And what the sensor also is doing is if there are more people standing, uh, is, is um, uh, the temperature of the body is... is uh, I would, I would is it, how can I say that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah when, when a couple of people standing there, the temperature of the body, the yeah. sensor will, will uh, uh, temperature that, and then the light will uh, turn into green, huh. faster than the car, uh, the car users. Mm -hmm. Clever, really yeah. clever. Interesting, yeah, great. And, and just, I mean, to, to, to where, where are the things that you're bumping into as a city? I mean, we'll come back to this in more detail shortly, but maybe where are the limitations? Because, you know, again, Rotterdam, like Barcelona, you're doing so many things, but are, are, there, are there kind of red flags and little pots where you actually think this is, this is trickier for us? Maybe give us a hint of what they might be. Well, I'm not into that details to give an uh, answer sure. on that, yes, seriously. Okay. So uh, give me time to get, okay. uh, get you the answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, great stuff. <laughs> Let's come to Santiago. I had to look through the recovery plan for Madrid. Um, a few weeks ago, which is, you know, oh, congratulations, it's a really, really, really well, well put together comprehensive document. The Commission's asked for a, a percentage of all of those documents to have a digital focus. So clearly in there, there's lots of things happening. What are the things you would pick out, Santiago, from maybe some of the things you've already mentioned that you think are worth us exploring further in this conversation? Well, yeah, there are, um, let's say, in the, in the strategy of Madrid for digital, digital transformation, there are like several lines of action, I yeah. would mention uh, some of them. I already mentioned that any employee of Madrid City Council can do its full work anywhere in the city or even outside the city, not being necessarily in the office. The only thing you, he cannot do or she cannot do is having a coffee in the coffee machine with, the, with job <laughs> mates, but otherwise everything else can be done remotely. <laughs> then uh, we are also working in the deployment of 5G infrastructure in the city because this can uh, at the moment, let's say, uh, small scale experiments and implementations, this can really uh, be a game changer in the scale of uh, the complexity and the advanced digital services that we can use uh, yeah. based on this 5G infrastructure. Also, uh, we want to, we are using and we want to use more and more like big data uh, in, real in real time, if, if possible, like traffic and other sensors in the city and artificial intelligence to use it internally as city council, but also where this is possible and appropriate with an open data policy as a way to, to be transparent with citizens, but also as a way to provide opportunities for startups, businesses to build on this data and provide services to, to citizens themselves, combining with other, other tools they may have. No? Also, uh, that this is, I think, a very important driver of innovation, not only of, of, of improving the, the city system by itself. And also, regarding the, the digital inclusion and digital divide, which I think is very important, we are very concerned on that as well. And I would say that there are three angles on that. There is the, the different people regarding digital transformation, but there, there's, there's, there is the territorial perspective, because mm -hmm. Madrid, for example, is a big city. We have like 21 districts. Each district has an average size of 150,000 people. So there is a heterogeneity of conditions in each of those districts, and also within the economic sectors. So first, we know uh, that the elderly and perhaps uh, some of the most vulnerable people need more support in being skilled and trained in this, in this, in this uh, transformation. But uh, when we transform digitally a lot of our services, this has not been in the disadvantage of these people because all the users that have moved to the digital services have left, let's say, more space, less queues for the uh, physical office attention that is still maintained through this period. So all the people that need the physical attention is getting it, it even in better conditions because of the displacement of, of users to the digital channels. And then we created, we are creating at the moment a center, municipal center for digital skilling and ICT skilling, and we are creating this in San Blas, which is a district, an area where there are some pockets of unemployed people, vulnerable people, where we really want to focus there, the work on, on this skilling. And then regarding the economic sectors, we don't want uh, the digital transition to mean just 
that uh, the big companies, the corporations, and um, high-tech uh, large companies are winning, and then the small size enterprises are getting behind. No? We want to really push for all the municipal markets, the small shops to be online. We are uh, giving subsidies and helping them to be in the e-commerce uh, channels, to be present online so that they are really uh, kept uh, alive and kept dynamic in these uh, times that are coming. No? And all of this and many other things are, as you said, in the in the European Funds Plan, which we call the Recovery, Transformation, yeah. and Resilience Plan yeah. of the City of Madrid, which we approved uh, uh, last June, no, June 2021. Yeah. And there we have um, all 105 projects that we consider that could be eligible for European funding. And these cover all angles of digital, green, social cohesion, all the angles of the of the of our Madrid plan, but also of the national and European objectives. And there we have only for, let's say, purely digital projects, we have projects uh, that amount 380 million euros that we could develop uh, with the European funds, and if not, with uh, other resources, municipal resources, to move forward in all these directions. Perhaps later we can give some examples, concrete examples of that. Okay, good. And again, we'll hear a bit tomorrow from um, Fernando from the Digital Madrid Digital Agency. He'll talk a bit more about the digital strategy, so a chance to, for us to hear a little bit more about that tomorrow. Indeed. Um, I mean, I guess just, just coming to you, Marie, and thinking about, uh, you know, we've already heard about this, uh, this the importance of the multi-level governance kind of connection at the European level, the member state level, the city level. Clearly, you know, as in like we can't pay for everything, we can't afford everything, so we need to make tough choices and priorities, hardware, software, startups, and it shouldn't be either or, but sometimes it is either or, and, you know, money is tight, and we live in strange times, so... You know, we're trying to make long-term strategies at a time where things are very, very turbulent, which is also incredibly challenging. I mean, from the perspective of the Czech Republic and from the ministry, uh, working with your cities and having these conversations, I know you've talked about 5G corridors, you've talked about the hardware, I guess you're also thinking about the skills, the talent competition. Again, maybe what are some of the key things happening in these discussions that you think are good to, to complement what our speakers have already said? It's a terribly long question, sorry. It wasn't, there was a question in there, which is just uh, well, your, your key points, maybe from the Czech Republic would be helpful. So maybe a few examples of some yeah. projects. Right now we are part of the capacity projects under the Horizon Europe program goals, which is to support cities in their transition towards climate neutrality. And uh, I just mentioned that uh, with the... Uh, our colleagues from the Ministry of Industry, we uh, pushed the city to, to do the project uh, five with using the 5G networks. Yeah. And uh, so on May, we had the first call uh, to using just the recovery, recovery resilience fund for this, this project. And we see the most of the project you is the just for the urban traffic. And the second one, there is uh, also mm, the, 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 the topic is also education, is um, uh, healthcare, and, um, and uh, also uh, some uh, tools for, for the industry, uh, for zero. Yeah. And... Uh, 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 what we do, um, so for example, now, um, thanks our presidency, we mentioned the call uh, for the uh, partnerships, and uh, we, they will two thematic partnerships for greening cities and the sustainable tourism. And I know that 80 European cities uh, put the, the interest. Mm -hmm. So I'm very curious to see the, what is inside. So, uh, yeah, and uh, of course that also, um, um, so and on the national level, we try to create the national digital agenda, no digital, yeah, the mm -hmm. national digital yep. agenda, uh, just to simplify the, 
the thing, so we will see how it could will be helpful also for other other ministries, other other colleagues. Okay. As well for the for the municipal level. Yeah. Interesting. And the, the notion of you know partnership working and clearly net Europe the, the raison d'être of, uh, of your cities is for cities to work together. But you know, one of the interesting things for me uh, in in some of these new documents is talking about you know, member states working together, so country to country collaboration, a recognition that Europe needs to raise its game collectively. Because if you look at the super block conversation and you know a reliance on uh, you know a whole range of things from from whether it's the, Im the impact of microchips in the, as a result of Russia's invasion of Ukraine to uh, our, our kind of ta talent requirements, our use of, 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 of cloud computing, mainly from the US. So clearly one of the big drivers is to, for Europe collectively to, to raise the tide. And, and, and that's really exciting. Um, but it also means that you know, if we want cities to be part of that, uh, we need to work out how that's going to happen. And I'm just going to open things up a bit, rather than sort of going through all of you one by one by one. So if you want to, I mean, if you want to come in, just pop your hand up, and I'll, I'll bring you into the conversation. So I guess my question is, how do we make sure cities are at the table as we begin to have these country-to-country -country collaborations, these member-state collaborations, as we, as we you know, begin to have these um, different multi-level governance kind of relationships? Um, Quite often, cities are th the last ones to, to know, yeah. you know, and, and the urban agenda really tries to bring cities to the table. And as we're making progress, but I think you, know, you certainly gave me a sense live that you know, mostly this is good. There's still quite a way to go. Yeah. Um, does anyone want to pick up and just share some thoughts about how we can do this more effectively to make sure cities are there as active partners, not we're just ticking the box and they're they're at the table in terms of making decisions. I think that there is something that might seem obvious, but it is it happens not enough uh, and uh, this is that the eu institutions listen uh, to cities i would say listen more to cities at least um, how can cities um, better benefit from uh, from eu initiatives uh, i think the truth is that most of times um, we are not benefiting from them it, we are just implementing them. Uh, and it's something implement. But we need to be more relevant in this process. Um, most of times we find ourselves in a situation in which uh, there is funding uh, of, uh, for EU flagship interventions, initiatives. In this case, is, uh, the news is that um, a large amount of money is made available for a concrete project, let's say a digital twin or yeah. retrofitting, yeah. Uh, energy retrofitting, for example. But what happens next is that uh, this money is made available uh, through a call um, with very strict spending rules that many times do not correspond with the reality of local administration uh, capacities or even with the needs on the ground. Uh, what I'm not saying is that uh, there needs to be no rules uh, or no new initiatives from the Commission or, uh, or the member states. Of course we need them. What I'm saying uh, is uh, that uh, um, these initiatives and these, uh, these rules are defined, are designed, having into account that we are there to implement those projects. Um, so we, we want to be there. We want to be there at the very first step of the process of defining, designing uh, an initiative and uh, a project. Let, let's take an example of, um, of digital inclusion. In Barcelona, I think it's the same uh, overall, um, we, have been, we have been working since the start of the pandemic on a new digital inclusion policy. We analyzed the situation in the city after the, the, the hardest months of the pandemic, the lockdown. We identified the obstacles that people face uh, to access to internet and, and benefit from it and we set up several uh, initiatives to address the digital divide. In this case, we have the knowledge uh, on how the digital divide looks like in Barcelona, 
the tools to address it, and we know how to do it, but we need resources. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it is an expensive policy if we want an, a structural policy and not just a policy for some months uh, during the lockdown, for example. So uh, this is something that requires coordinated action and investment across uh, different levels of governments because we don't have uh, the capacity to do it on our own. This, the issue here, I think, is that uh, among the many programs I'm funding, uh, available for cities, we haven't seen anything that provides structural support to a challenge that is digital, social, and economic. What I mean is uh, that there is often a mismatch uh, between what is happening in cities and what EU programs uh, offer in terms of uh, policy priorities and duration and scale of the projects. And some of these, I think, could uh, be easily solved uh, by doing something very easy, involving cities, uh, representatives in the process, as I say, the, of designing uh, um, these policies, uh, these this commissions programs addressed to local and regional governments, because they are, okay. we are, who will be at the end of the of the day okay. implementing these policies. Okay, I mean, digital designers talk about UX, you know, user experience, understanding the user experience, the interface. So, it, it would make perfect sense to to have cities inside doing the designing, you know, stress testing, future proofing. Um, I'm just going to push you a little bit more and ask you how how would that how how might we do that? I mean, if we're thinking aloud and we're you know, sharing some thoughts around how that might happen in practice. A any ideas or suggestions? I mean, you know, the Digital Forum is one of them, <laughs> I guess, uh, because it's a great platform for cities to, to collaborate, cities sometimes to compete, but very often they how collaborate. Um, any, any suggestions from any of you about how we, how we get that UX, that, how we bake in that city perspective more effectively in, in the kind of policy making? Yeah, Fuzzy? Well, well, I guess th th this is the moment uh, to use, like, uh, well, we can start now uh, uh, to have a pact and establish a structure for dialogue between the European Commission, uh, the Council and the cities, one part. The other part, we have also Europe Parliament uh, 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 parties in the Europe, uh, in the yeah. Europe Parliament, yeah. so we can use them as, as partners uh, in, this, uh, in this subject. So I guess that's additional uh, on... on the thing that Laia said. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Do you want to come in, there, Santiago? Yeah, sure. Um, I think that um, we all agree, and I think this is the case, that we need more voice in defining the priorities, but we also want more direct funding from Europe to the cities. Uh, we know that member states matter, and <laughs> they have to control most of uh, this funding, but we still want to have a, a larger share and not just that the member states finally allocate some of the money finally to the cities, but that we have a specific programs directly going to the European cities. <laughs> in fact, at the moment, for example, in Madrid, we are, as perhaps other cities, we are working mm, very easily with European programs, with cities outside Europe, like, the, for example, the International Urban and Regional Cooperation allow us to set up projects with Melbourne or San Diego, in our case, in Australia and United States. Yeah. Or we have the DG on international partnerships, we are uh, getting European money to work with Bogota, uh, to work with Praia, and, and these instruments could be made stronger within Europe, between European cities as well, and not the same instrument, but the kind of philosophy that would be very helpful, especially in the field of digital transformation. And a very good example that we have welcomed very much from the Commission has been the Horizon Program missions, the city mission, no? the, the mission of smart and climate yeah. neutral cities that uh, 100 or well, 112 cities have finally been selected for, for that mission, Madrid uh, among them, and, and Barcelona, and many, many others here. But uh, I think that the, the interesting thing of this process, it has been, in Spain at least, and I think in other countries as well, the, the Spanish cities have been working together to get ready for that mission. We created a group of Spanish cities, we call CTS 2030, that we were, uh, in fact, supporting each other, uh, seven, eight cities, to get ready for the expression of interest and submit our proposals. So this really stimulated work within uh, Spain for preparing for the mission. And now that the mission is launched uh, European-wide, we hope that this will continue to be a, a good environment for, for further opportunities. But I have to say that the mission uh, has uh, 
some important amount of resources, but not at the scale that is needed for actually transforming the cities toward climate neutrality. Neutrality is more like helping the cities to coordinate mm -hmm. and find synergies, but we'll need in that frame to, to have additional resources for specific projects that are coordinated within multi multiple cities at a time. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I guess, you know, member states are different sizes. So I had a conversation with a, a policymaker from Finland a, a month or so ago where he said that some of the direct funding which had gone to, to city initiatives, he said at a national level, we, we've kind of taken a step back from those because we think there's a direct line between the commission and those cities. So, and, and he was reflecting, saying, actually, we, we took a step too far away. We need to be a bit closer because some really interesting innovation happened there. We were too far from it. So I think you know, we're all trying to work out the, the best way, and there's no perfect solution, but you know, what works for Spain, what works for Finland, what might work for the Netherlands, what might work for the Czech Republic, you know, these are all, all slightly different uh, perspectives. And I don't know, in a smaller member state like the Czech Republic, where you have Prague, Brno, other cities, is, is there this, this um, close collaborative model, do, do, is, is there a, a good working relationship? Are cities inside helping make decisions, or is, or is that still tricky to negotiate, as, as it seems to be uh, in, in, in most countries? In Czech Republic, the territorial settlement is very, very fragmented. Okay. We have uh, 6,250 municipalities, so it's incredible. Wow. Maybe only in France is the same situation. Mm. Um, so the role of the cities is uh, really crucial, it's very yeah. important, because we have uh, more than 5,000 villages, more than 100 inhabitants, and so if the number of these little municipalities is so huge and their voice on in, in Prague, in the government, mm -hmm. we can hear them. Mm -hmm. And so I, I see that the, we should help to the cities also because their role is for the economic development. It's crucial on the national level. So... Um, what we have a uh, really uh, good experience from the European level, it's the using the integrated uh, tools, spe uh, spe specifically the integrated territorial investment, which um, helps to cities to start to do their strategic project on the metropolitan area. Mm -hmm. And they started to cooperate between them because before, the really the, the cooperation was mostly between European cities and towns, but now this cooperation I, I see the, 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 the changes of the good practices, etc. It's uh, it's something new, and I know that it comes from the programming period uh, 2013, which we started to cooperate together. Yeah. And yeah, it's it's very helpful for us. Yeah. And so I'm very interested that in mm -hmm. uh, in Spain you cooperate the cities also also in the international level, not only in the European level, but also in the whole world. So yeah, yeah it's it's it's, it's nice. Positive. It's it's very it must be very positive experience. Yeah. Usually we tend to compete, no, for the funds, etc. But in this case, we <laughs> managed to agree all, all the cities, at least the big cities, to 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 cooperate for this particular in my mission, particular yeah. mission of the yeah. Horizon program. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. Laya, you, you I think you wanted to come in there also. I, I want to be positive, but I'm not so so positive. <laughs> uh, so I think it's 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 true what what Santiago said. It, there's a lot to do between cities collaborating and uh, trying to raise uh, conclusions and concerns and trying to find ways to, uh, to share these concerns with uh, national governments, member states, and, and, yeah. and EU institutions. But, but at the end of the day, I think what we need, what we really need uh, to to have a, a real change of the sit this situation is uh, transforming the way uh, cities are seen by the EU uh, institutions. 
um, I sometimes have the, the feeling that uh, the current urban policy uh, regards cities as spaces for experimentation. Uh, the spaces where uh, we can test uh, new projects, new policies, innovation, that's fantastic. That's, that's true, we are this space to test uh, uh, innovative projects. This is right, but we are more than that. Yeah. Um, I think innovation, it's something that has become very important, uh, but it's not the only thing uh, that we do. Um, I think, in fact, local governments are, as we have said, in, on the front line uh, of dealing with crisis, um, COVID a couple of years ago, uh, the inflation crisis now. Um, we are the first to respond to citizens' uh, problems through proximity services. And this is something, uh, this is not something that is translated uh, into more structural funding and uh, schemes or, or policy support from uh, national governments uh, and EU institutions. So probably if we consider what can the European Commission and the member states do uh, to fully involve uh, cities, uh, I would say this is something very easy to do. We can start or they can start uh, regarding local authorities as public institutions, uh, as public institutions with full democratic uh, legitimacy rather than only mere, uh, mere implementers of mm -hmm. uh, uh, policies or mere innovators. And then, of course, uh, they can start trusting us as partners uh, for policy design, as I said, and provide adequate financial support uh, for the challenges we are actually facing. Um, and not only for the fancy innovations uh, they want to see, yeah. and we want to see also, Absolutely. but not only for this. So this, I think, would fundamentally change the way cities uh, relate to member states and EU institutions, and even, I think, uh, would change the mission of Eurocities. Um, we would move, if this happens, from acting, acting as uh, another lobby in, yeah. in, in Brussels uh, to be considered actual public powers with a seat on the table of making decisions. Okay. Thanks, Elias. So we're talking about re rewiring, rewiring the relationship. I can see Eddie taking notes as this conversation's happening, and I look forward to hearing your, your thoughts on the discussion we're having. <laughs> And I'm looking in yeah. this direction, <laughs> but I should. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> no. and, and as you were speaking there, it also made me think about you know, the Barcelona experience around things like Airbnb, you know, yeah. where you, you see uh, some new disruptive platform, it's really exciting, yeah. it's highly in innovative, but it has massive implica you know, implications, unintended consequences around the affordability of housing. Um, and you know, and you're, you know, as, as the governance is catching up, you know, because this is moving so quickly, you're trying to, on the hoof, trying to make sense of and anticipate what's coming next. So yeah. it's incredibly fast moving. You know, we saw in the pandemic, cities can innovate. They can move really fast when they have to, and they were incredibly, you know, effective at doing that. Uh, but equally, it's really difficult isn't it, to, to keep pace with the, with the speed of change. Um, I mean, just in terms of this conversation around finance, and, and just as a final question before I begin to kind of wrap things up here, um, we haven't talked much about the private sector, and we haven't talked much about the role of City Hall mm -hmm. in kind of helping all of this to happen. We've talked a bit about the kind of you know, the, the vertical relationships, but there's also the kind of horizontal, you know, in, in a classic kind of urban integrated approach, you have, you know, those things happening this way and also that way. Can we maybe say a little bit about, because in terms of where the money comes from, and, you know, and, and Fozzie said right at the start, we can't lead this to the market. We need to be active enablers. But equally, you know, we've referred to the limited capacity of, 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 of Citio, both in terms of the expertise and the number of bodies, numbers of people, uh, but also the fact that this has to be a public-private collaboration to make it happen. And, and maybe just share with us a couple of thoughts around 
what are the key things that city, that, you know, city authorities are doing and should be doing to maximize and optimize that, that relationship to get a win-win set of results for us. Maybe ask you, Marie, this time, first of all, do you, how do, how's it working in the Czech Republic? Are, are we seeing um, those, those public and private players creating new kinds of ways of working? Is, is, how, how are things shaping up there? It's a very good question, yeah. because if you see competitiveness or cohesion, what is more important? We need both. And you need to cooperate with the territorial partners and in the field of the competitiveness, you, maybe you, you need more the private sector to involve in the cohesion, maybe the social partners. And um, I was working for the city of Brno 20 years, so it was really nice long period. And uh, so I know how it was important to involve the whole private sector to do the city strategy mm -hmm. and so um, we create really a uh, very good uh, cooperative ecosystem which is working till now and it was re it's real quadruple helix cooperation and of course a very good example for us was the Rotterdam or uh, Amsterdam Dutch cities because we are working in this time with the Dutch uh, Asso Association of the Municipalities, VNG. And so I see that maybe sometimes, so in the city level, it's much clear to cooperate with the private sector. And I see now on the state level that sometimes it's not politically mm -hmm. easy <laughs> to offer to the private sector the same role as the social partners, for example. Okay. Because uh, I, no, we create, not I create, but we create on the field of smart city, something like a ministry's gremium, where we in invited the most important um, private uh, companies. And after the political changement, I see with the new minister, that he's not, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. he doesn't agree that it's a good way to cooperate. But in the digitalization and some, not only digitalization, but green transition, digital transition, energetic, energy, energy transition, we need to cooperate together. It's not possible yeah. to have only public sector, private sector, so, okay. in my opinion, it's the, the best cooperation to involve Absolutely. both parts. Okay, thanks for that. O other thoughts? I mean, you know, it's, we know it's essential, but it has to be transparent, it has to be fair, it has to be balanced, we can't seem to be preferring. So it's, it's, it's not, <laughs> again, it's tricky. Uh, Santiago, you're doing lots of interesting things in this city here. H you know, maybe give us a, a couple of thoughts on this. Yes, because all these transformations, uh, we, we cannot do them alone. I mean, yeah. city councils directly yeah. are managing a small part of the city activity. Yeah. So it would be naive to think that we just, with the municipal budget on our direct uh, uh, staff, we are going to, to make this happen. So it's not possible to think like that. Uh, we, as uh, the public policies, need to define what is the direction of the city, which are the good projects for the city, and once those are defined and validated by the political representatives, Everyone wanting and being able to zoom up in that direction is welcome. So we strongly believe in public-private partnerships, and we are in fact implementing those. In the field of digitalization, we created clusters on big data, yeah. cluster on cybersecurity, cluster on engineering, where all the big, small companies that have activity in the city are uh, put together there and are talking with us permanently. We also... Um, for example, uh, regarding the, um, the climate neutrality, uh, we um, created the climate group uh, with, together with Climate Kick, which was, is mm -hmm. one of the yeah. largest uh, European initiatives on innovation for, for climate action. We, are, we were one of the 15 European deep demo cities of Climate Kick, and we created a climate group where we had presence of all the departments of the city council, but also of private companies, universities, social entities to, to think together how the projects should be and co-design, even projects that were already, let's say, 
in a first phase designed by the council were enriching that process. And uh, in fact, in the economic case, the business case of the decarbonization of Madrid that we developed with, with Material Economics, one of the partners of Climate Kick, uh, we saw that the, the scale of funding required for the decarbonization is significant. We also saw that the return of investment is positive, so we will get more back uh, than what we put in, mm -hmm. considering yeah. both direct and indirect benefits. But we also saw that the percent of that funding that needs to come from the municipal budget is rather small. Uh, most of it has to come from private citizens, from companies that see opportunities for investment for making this transition possible. So that is very clear message that we got there. And to give you an example, on this climate neutrality roadmap, we have one of these selected areas in the city, which is Madrid Nuevo Norte, Madrid New North, which is an entire uh, new uh, urban regeneration project in the north of the city. Five kilometers of railway lines will be covered and a new entire district of the city will be, let's say, a black canvas, a white canvas that mm -hmm. we will design already from the start, a climate neutral digital city. And this is completely built with private partners. So we are defining the sustainability parameters, the number of social housing, uh, private housing, equipment, uh, financial uh, um, facilities, but all this is going to be developed by uh, strong involvement of, of private partners according to the rules that we have all agreed for that development. Okay, super, really exciting. I walked along the Casa del Campo yesterday and that, that area has been transformed in the 20 odd years I've been coming to Madrid. It's, it's astonishing, really, really impressive. So yeah, that's yeah nice super also. to see, great to see. Um, maybe final comments, some brief um, comments about this, you know, the role of City Hall in enabling and, and facilitating and brokering this, these new dialogues as a well, it's, it's indeed an illusion to think that you can do this by yourself. You yeah. need, of course, yeah. uh, also the private sector. Uh, but as I said, you can leave it only to the market, but you, as, as a City Hall or as a government, yeah. you need to keep an eye on this. Uh, especially uh, to, to avoid exclusion or discrimination in the system that, that we create. Uh, and as I started as a statement is, well, we uh, are not want with the digital transformation in everything what we do is that, that, we, we, that we create a gap between humans and systems. So, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And there are some big pitfalls ahead of us, aren't there, if, we're not, if we don't manage this properly. Last word to you, Leah, before I invite Eddie to join us on okay. stage, just again so on this public-private. Very, very briefly. For us, this uh, public-private uh, uh, public -private collaboration is essential, and it belongs to the DNA of our day-to-day -day work. Uh, all your concerns are also uh, our concerns, but I think, I really think that local governments, public private collaboration in, in local governments is easier because the balance is easier. If we talk about public-private collaboration in local yeah. governments, yeah. Uh, we don't talk only about uh, companies. Private sector is not only companies. It's the whole private sector. So for example, and I, 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 I finish with this, for our uh, challenge of digital divide in Barcelona, we implemented, we implemented uh, a, a pilot project in a neighborhood, a little neighborhood, um, after having diagnosed uh, uh, how big is the, the, the dimension of the digital divide uh, in the whole city. We chose uh, a neighborhood and we covered all the needs they had in terms of uh, digital divide. That means connectivity, that means uh, devices, and that means knowledge to use uh, internet. Uh, we want to prove that with all the resources we need, the digital divide has another, looks different yeah. like. Yeah. Uh, and, and, uh, but even for a little neighborhood, we couldn't, we had not, not enough resources. So we asked for help, and we sat uh, around the table, companies and uh, social uh, organizations of the city to help in giving us connectivity, devices, or knowledge, and accompanying the families. The result has been 
uh, fantastic. Great example. But yeah. this is only a pilot project. Again, yeah. Yeah. so the important here is not, have, not only having this result yeah. and um, an applause, uh, but also creating a way to work. But for that, we need something more than public-private collaboration. We need public resources to scale up these projects as a structural policy. Okay. Thanks, Lars. We need lots of creative thinking. We need continued financial innovation. We mustn't just think it's public or private. It's binary. There's a whole range of opportunities out there. So we'll continue this conversation in the coming days. But let's push the pause button for the moment. Let's invite Eddie onto the stage. Also, you could never have too many Eddies on the stage. So it's good to, <laughs> good to have someone else uh, who shares. Yeah, yeah. Come and join us, Eddie. Um, that was quite a big, wide-ranging discussion. So uh, I, I saw you scribbling furiously. Maybe, maybe just play back some thoughts and maybe pick up some specific comments that people have made if you'd like to. So thanks. Yes, well, it's a very rich discussion as I was expecting anyway. But, but I, I, I think I gathered two themes. One is around the policy development and the other is about people working together. I mean, that, that's what I captured in a lot of the conversation. Now, if I venture into politics, correct me, I'm not allowed to, I'm a civil servant, so, uh, but there are a lot of political comments, but I try not to venture into that, but um, sometimes you can't escape. On, on the policy uh, side, the title is um, Cities Fit for Europe's Digital Decade. And what I heard a lot is that the panel wanted to reverse the title. Europe's digital decade fit for cities. Uh, you know, I summarize a bit of the, the discussion, and that is precisely what we have, where we have tried to go in, in terms of making the work that we do, and it's only a, I have a small team that we work on, but there's plenty of pe other people in the European Commission that do that as well, to really make sure that the agendas fit the cities, and it's not a, lay it's not a, a layer on top. Now, I'm... I'm uh, quite a, length, a long time a civil servant in the European Commission, so I know how it works. We do a law and the member state and parliament, and then it trickles down, and in the end, someone benefits or not benefits. I know how it works. But really what we've tried to do, and I mentioned the Living in EU movement, was to say, like, now this is for a purpose. This needs to be meaningful, and we need to design this. And it's a lot of the conversation I have with my colleagues also within the Commission, particularly the units with dealing with digital decades, so yeah, we need to bring that much closer now. We all bring the baggage that we have. I happen to work under the, the Treaty of the European Union and the Treaty of the Functioning of the European Union, and those treaties only know member states and parliaments. They don't know regions and cities. But I think we've tried to be creative in that, and I think Natalia Aristimunio will tomorrow also speak to you on the Interoperable Europe Act. I'm not going to give away what, what she will say, or what she may or may not say, but. We have really tried to work hard to say, if you have these onion layers of, of decision makers, you, it's member states, part of, yes, I know, but can there not be a layer of regions, of cities? And you know, I've also worked in regional policy, and that is something that I've seen coming, and also that it has that purpose. When you mentioned the green, which is also the title of the agenda, uh, inclusion was very strongly mentioned. My favorite is always uh, uh, citizens participation in uh, through digital means and that's where also the local digital twins I think can play a role and uh, you know with, with all the technical work that we're doing and, and I will, will not I will spare you that is when Ursula von der Bauhaus uh, Ursula von der Leyen said I have a new ba European Bauhaus initiative I said hey uh, data platform local digital twin virtual reality co-design of cities Bauhaus. So I now have a project that will develop the digital dimension of the new European Bauhaus. So we, we do things there on the policies. I, I very much, what resonated with me is this project without a scalable solution. I think Laia mentioned it, but it came across in a number of those sort of things. And that is precisely what we have tried to reverse with the Living in Dr. You movement. Because to be honest, that's the conversation I had four years ago. People said, what are we going to do? Uh, Moonshots, all that sort of discussions. And they said, oh, yeah, let's have asked for another 500 million to do pilots. Uh, no, I said, I'm sick of pilots. I've done for, for, I've been thought 30 years of pilots, and none of them has ever scaled. None of them. So why would I do pilots? So we actually had this conversation with EuroCities, with the Euro Organization of Agile and Smart Cities, and with the European Network of Living Labs. said, well, what do you think? Should we do keep, I can ask for 300 million of pilots, we do calls, we keep on 
amusing ourselves, visiting nice places. But should we not start with a common vision? Should we not start with a common vision together? And then do we not need the politicians and the technicians in the room? Because a lot of these pilots that you uh, dutifully mention are all done by your civil service. It's a chief technology officer or someone that is in European affairs that goes to these seminars and that say, I learned this. Um, uh, but it, there's no traction with the, with the, at the political level. And that is why we created that movement, a bit like the covenant of mayors for uh, the, the, the climate change, to really create it. So that is, if you like, on, on the politics. Maybe very briefly on the funding, I, I take all these points, but again, there's treaties in the way these work first. My, my, my answer to that is always, actually, don't ask for a direct financial relationship with the European Commission. You don't know what you ask for. <laughs> ask for an influence of how the European Union money is spent and leave the financial management to someone else. I think that's, and it's, it's important because I won't mention the country, but in the, in the RRF discussion, there was one country that said, yeah, we want money for the cities and then we decide what we do. Yeah, but what's the point? How many cities do you have? 6,000? So then we give it the money and we give it to 6,000 municipalities. You all do something different and then you need five civil servants to make some sort of sense out of what the collective uh, policy then is. No. Go to the national government and say, we would like to help you, help us, help your agenda. Because it, it, uh, climate change, uh, greening, inclusion, it's not like the national government has a different agenda than the city. But we, will, we want to do that with you. I think in the Netherlands there was even a parliamentary motion to ask the government, to instruct the government, to consult. The, now, I'm not sure what they did with it, but, you know, so, but do it that way. So that is on, on the funding. Then on the people. Um, what, I, what, I, what, what, what we have done is really to work with people that have a similar vision. People like you and I here in this, this conversation, well, how can we actually make this work together? And maybe break out a little bit from our institutional roles and just listen to each other and benefit from the wisdom that each of us brings to the table from various angles and various experience. And these are the things that we have actually done. We came to a set of, of and when I say we, it's the living in .eu movement that I, I present. Even, even for me as a commission official, it's probably not the natural way of doing this. I should have written a communication and then an act, and, and then again, in the end you have a delegated act where I instruct you which technology to use for your digital platform. That's the normal route. We decided not to do that. We said, like, let, let's bring that collective, collective wisdom in. And then you developed, again, I don't want to go too technical, but you develop a set of standards or family of standards that you can actually deploy to do that to remain independent. Because my agenda is European sovereignty and digital decade. Your agenda is maybe not necessarily that, but in the end, your agenda is also sovereignty, because you do not want your successes in 20 years to be confronted with saying, oh yeah, someone decided that 20 years ago, now I'm locked in, there's nothing I can do about it, all my data, some cities try to negotiate, let's say, with big players, they're like, well, yeah, I don't like this clause in your contract. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, what, so yes, but you buy it anyway. <laughs> I don't I even, but some cities try to negotiate. Collectively, if we say it's 450 million European citizens, we're not going to do that. We have an ethical AI, we have uh, principles, we have registers. That's the way we are going to do that, and we all have, and irrespective of who's in the room, that's the point. We're all going to say that. That gives the power of the European Union, gives also the power and the sovereignty at the local level. And that is why we have things like uh, standards, we will, we, in, in January, February, we will launch the idea of to measure the digital maturity of a municipality, of a city. I say municipality because I also think of villages, I know you like cities, but um, how do we measure that? If I ask you, any of you, how are you doing? It's complete silence in the room because we actually don't know how we been. Oh yeah, I have worked on 5G and I've done this, and that. but it's all anecdotal. But have we actually a comparative benchmark between all, and I'm look, not looking at 6,000, 
my constituency is 86,000 municipalities in the European Union, and they all need to do the same thing. Now, it's that ambitious, and I have a lot of discussion with colleagues. So I say 300 million European citizens need to be covered by municipalities that actually follow that system that we will launch in March and April, uh, in, uh, in January and in February. And that is where the people come in. We have tried as a European Commission, with the number of people from various DGs that do that, to actually work within you, with you, in the heart. And I will conclude on that because since the 1st of October, I'm looking at Andre, Andre I look at Laia, and I look at Federica, I've given you the key. We now have a project, it's called the Community Co Coordination Support Action, where, led by Eurocities, where we've said you manage now this living in the year movement to your taste, with the five other four other partner organizations doing with it. Well, I'm not a shy person, so I will make my views know if I think that is not quite where I would like the movement to go. But you have to keep. There's now a, a project that you can do. And it's very small money, but it is, it's, a, it's a vote of confidence to say, you can do this, and we can do this together. And that is why I want to conclude on that people that mentioned and congratulate also your cities on, on, on the work done and the possibilities that we hope to offer them also uh, for the future. That's great. Thank you, Eddie. Um, I really appreciate you coming and being so frank and also, you know, doing what you, we said you would do, which is not sticking to the script, listening and reacting. And it's a chance to hear more about living and working in the EU tomorrow. As you say, Natalia will be joining us. We'll talk a bit more about the, the, the operation, you know, the, I, I'm, it's been a long day. The, uh, <laughs> uh, opera, op, the op, interoperable. I'll try that again later on after I've had a couple of drinks, maybe. Uh, so my point is we've got off to a great start, I think. Um, I please join me in giving a big thank you to our panelists. <laughs> I, I could sense um, in the body language you know, a desire to, to continue the conversation and react to some of Eddie's points. We'll have to do that over a glass of wine this evening, I'm afraid, because um, we're about to go outside. We're about to go on the road. Um, we have bus, buses which are picking us up just outside. People will show you where, right outside the building uh, at, uh, in five minutes' time. We're going to see La Nave, this uh, digital, digital innovation space. Uh, this is a bit like being at the cinema in the afternoon. When you come out, you're going to have to blink your eyes a bit and rub your eyes because it's very dark in here and it's very bright out there. Yeah. Uh, but I'm sure you've got enough time to make the adjustment. Huge thanks all, you know, again to all of you. Uh, thanks to our audience for sticking with us. We'll carry on the con conversations over the bus and this evening, uh, and see you later. Thank you, and thanks for getting us started. <laughs> thanks a lot, Lionel. Thanks a lot, well done. <laughs>